Well, welcome again to this month's Fireside Chat. Today I have a couple special guests with me, and uh, they're going to share with you some uh, uh, matters of faith, uh, ministry, and um, topics of longevity, and uh, love, and tell some stories. So today, I have Marilee uh, Ranke, who is a, a befriending minister. So I'll ask Marilee, what is a, a befriender? And uh, our special guest today is Pearl Lindbergh. And Pearl and her family is probably one of the longest, oldest, longest family members of First Lutheran Church. They've been a part of that congregation for a long time. And I'll let uh, Pearl tell you more about that. But um, we'll start out with Marilee. Marilee, why don't you go ahead and tell us what a befriender is and what is it that you do? Well, <clears throat> a bit a befriender, I guess, it is what it says. You're a friend to someone who's maybe been a shut-in or um you know would like to receive prayers and communion and stuff and typically before covid we were go i was coming to visit pearl like once a month and um prior to that when her husband was alive i came for a long time to see her and bob and we bring communion and we pray um but over the years pearl and i have become not only a befriender, but a good friend. And I tease her that she could be my mother. So anyway, we have a long standing. So Pearl, go ahead and uh, tell us about uh, a little bit about your uh, the relationship with the church at First Lutheran and how you found yourself there. I think your family belonged there. Your parents, didn't they? Okay. Didn't you tell me that? Yes, they belonged yeah. there yeah. too. So how long, how many years your family's been a member at First Lutheran? Uh, well, they were a member when I was a little kid. I, when they had Sunday school in the church in groups. In fact, I went to Sunday school there. At First Lutheran? Mm -hmm. And then when I got older, I taught Sunday school. I belonged to the junior choir. Yeah. And there was another girl and myself. She's another school girl. I haven't seen her for years. I don't even know where she is. Hmm. We tried to outdo each other in voices. <laughs> that didn't go over very good. We got talked about that. <laughs> and my husband it was Catholic, as everybody knew. So they, well, he belonged to the one in Wapan. And we'd go to Wapan, this is on a Sunday. Bob's mother would say, uh, Dad, you go to church with Bob. Uh, you go to church with Bob and I'll stay here with Pearl. I said, no, no. Bob, go to church with Dad and I'll go to church with you. We're all going together. So I'd be in church practically all morning the day that we went over there. That is early Sunday morning. And we, we got along fine, as long as we didn't bring up too much about changing churches. Um, that's with your in-laws. That, your in-laws didn't that, want to discuss yeah, that changed church. changed my mind, yeah. because um, I went to instructions. Then for him, I thought, well, one way or the other. But the, the priest told me that I should ask Bob, because he would know. So I did. No answer. I did that a few times and I said, you know what, Bob? You're not going to change for me and I'm not going to change for you. I went back to my church. So I actually didn't quit. I, I still went. Right. And um, you, find, found, you find found that Bob didn't know the answers to the questions, so you figure if he doesn't know enough about his religion, then I'm going to stay with mine. That's right. That's, that's what right. it went yes. down to. And yes. I got a kind of a kick out of that because the one time uh, when he was in the hospital, he had both knees replaced. And uh, every time that machine was going like this, blood was squirting. And I was trying to tell him that, and I couldn't get it across him, and I didn't know what to say. So I saw this man come down the hall, and I thought, oh boy. 
I want to get a hold of him. I didn't have to. He walked right in the room. That was Bittner. Bittler? Okay. Bittler, yeah. Dave Bittler. And they became friends right from the start. And Bob came in the back, you know, parked the cars in the back, and then he came in that way, always in that front seat. Mm -hmm. So they, they really got along. I so, think it kind of hurt him when he left. So Bob? came to the Lutheran Church one day, once Dave Bittler was here. Okay. okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so did, um, Bob hadn't been at First Lutheran very long when I started as okay. their befriender. Okay. So I've been a long time. So tell us about your special birthday. I hope I never have another special birthday. <laughs> I never had so many people in my house at one time. I didn't know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which was nice. I mean, they came as as a friend, and it, it, it was okay. I, I had one little great grandson. He could. I really was kind of put out about him, because every time somebody come in, bring him right over here. <laughs> if I knew him or not, but that was his way. And but you no. Know, so what advice do you have for us as through the lens of faith, longevity, uh, you've, you've lived a long time and you've mm -hmm. experienced many things and you've attended church churches um, for a long time. What advice do you have for us um, who are watching today? Uh, what, what would you like to share with us? Some, some advice that you've you've learned that makes good sense. Well, I don't know. I know you're not always there when I, when I do get up there, but every chance I get when I'm up there, I go into church and I say a prayer. That's God's house. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've always thought that. If I can get up there and sit, sit even just sitting on it, mm -hmm. I'm in God's house. Mm -hmm. I, I've always thought that and I always will because he's, He's going to be the one that's going to take care of us. I pray to him every night, and so help me, Hannah, I get to that one spot, and you think I can get over that spot? Yeah. <laughs> then I start all over. <laughs> and you've always felt that yep. <coughs> daily prayer yep. was very important. I know that, but... I have to start that so many times. <coughs> I get to go to sleep at night because I <laughs> wake myself up. How I know. far did I get? I think we I all do. We, we try and get so far, and then all of a sudden you pray yourself to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. I do that a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think part, you know, part of your... And, and uh, sometimes it really, it strikes me because how can you forget the Lord's Prayer? But I guess so far, what comes next? I know. <laughs> I think we right. can all do that yeah. sometimes. All of a sudden, I go, "What did I just say?" Or yeah. mm -hmm. something. But when we were talking about part of your longevity, I think we're back to the fact that your family has always been very important to you. Yes. Yeah. And I think your domestic duties, taking mm -hmm. care of Bob, and taking care of your children, and taking care of your home, being a good homemaker. Have, has been a very big part of you know, your, who you are. Another thing, when you talk about taking care of Bob, uh, the, the night that Bob died, uh, I was getting a permanent. And you know how long permanents take. And uh, the, nurse, the nurse walked me to the door, because it had a nurse at that time. And she said, Pearl, get your hair pretty for Bob and hurry back. I don't think I was home very long when Bob was gone. Yeah. He waited till you got back home. But the two of you had a good life. Yeah. You got to do lots of things. You did a little traveling, I think you've told yes, me. Yes, we did. And Back to, I think, that the Lord and your family were very important in all your life. Yeah, they were. I always wanted to know where they were, so I, in case something would come up, 
and that can happen so so fast. Oh, I know. Nobody knows how fast it can come up. Oh, we know that. We know that. Cause I, I tell Kathy every time anything gets near it, I, I want to move around or do something. And usually I get up and walk out in the kitchen or walk in the other rooms or something till it goes away and then I come back and sit down because I don't want to go through that again. Right, right. And who, who would think that something like that can happen? You know, when you're all right one minute and the next minute you don't know where you are. I think that's why I keep it quiet, I don't know. As you can tell, uh, the relationship between Mary Lee and Pearl is very strong. And uh, many of you may remember Pearl from when you were going to church or maybe during this COVID season when we were told to stay home. Maybe you um, haven't connected with Pearl. You could send her a card, just go to your church directory and she's in there or check with the church office or call Mary Lee and she'll help you uh, to get an address if you want to send a card to Pearl. Um, and just let her know that, that, um, that you're also alive and well. And, uh, um, and if you would like to have a befriender um, be a part of your life, your faith life, contact Marilee and she can help set that up. And um, so the church is, is continuing to reach out to people as, as Pearl indicated that the church has been very uh, important in her life and her faith has been very important in her life. And um, again, we just wanted to uh, bring you to Pearl's home and uh, let you know that, um, that Pearl is well and in uh, and, and fighting and alive and looks forward to uh, another hundred years. So oh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> we're going to sign off for today. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next month. So long. Uh,